So I started learning HTML, CSS, then I learned frameworks, React.js, CS libraries as well like Bootstrap, Tailwind, etc. In the backend as well, I started learning Node.js, MongoDB as a database and Express.js. And for interviews, you know, companies are asking DSA as well. So I started doing DSA questions in JavaScript. Hi everyone, welcome to Moscow Academy's YouTube channel. So you must have heard about stories of people transferring from non-tech roles to software engineering roles. And those stories are there. Today we have Mohit Sharawat, who did his B.Tech from IP University and then took up a marketing job. Afterwards, he made his career transition into software engineering role. But how? That's what I'm going to ask him in this podcast. We post many such podcasts on our YouTube channel. So if you like this video and want to see other videos as well, Consider subscribing to us and like this video as well. So stay tuned and let's start the video. Mohit has finally joined us. Thank you so much for joining Mohit. Hi everyone, this side Mohit Sharawat and I'm a full stack developer currently working at Kindrel. So I uh, did my B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering from IP University and uh, then later uh, on I was working in the marketing sector and then I switched to uh, tech industry. So, so Mohit, uh, yeah. Why did you want it to change to tech? Okay, so in the marketing, like I was specifically working in digital marketing sector. So I used to interact with uh, client websites. I used to take a lot of data from there. So I was like very curious how these websites are made and uh, what technologies they are using. So I used to do some research uh, on those things. And then I decided to move to that industry. So how, what was the process like? How did you make the change? Yeah, so during my uh, marketing job, I uh, started learning these things from online portals like YouTube and other platforms. Like I specifically want to go in web development line. So I started learning like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. I started from basic, then I uh, learned frameworks as well. So based on that, once I was like pretty confident to give interviews, so I started giving interviews in that line. So I think there might be some uh, difficulties that you must have faced right since you were from a marketing background you were seeing that yeah right? so uh, what were those difficulties someone faces coming from a non-it background yeah so initially i was also faced a lot of difficulties in that because i have a b-tech degree but it was from mechanical line it was not from computer science line and i have an experience of two years but that is also from marketing line so i was like a fresher in that line with uh, having no particular degree in that line so i faced a lot of challenges during the interviews but my skills were good i created a uh, multiple projects as well which showcases my skills my interviews went well as well and i have a good dsa knowledge so these things help me to crack uh, job interviews and what was the like once you upskilled i think like, did you focus on some tech stack while upskilling or uh, you were like generally DSA and system design and all. Yeah, so particularly I want to go in web development line. So I was focusing on that particular tech stack. Like uh, JavaScript is a basic thing. Uh, like it's the main thing. So I started learning that and uh, HTML, CSS. Then I learned frameworks uh, like React.js. Uh, CS libraries as well like Bootstrap or Tailwind etc. So these things I learned and then uh, in the backend as well I started learning Node.js, MongoDB as a database and Express.js which is also a framework of Node.js. So I started learning these things which are particularly for uh, web development and for interviews you know uh, companies are asking DSA as well. So I started doing DSA questions in JavaScript. So that helped me a lot to get a command on JavaScript. I uh, made a lot of projects, like I made uh, full-fledged websites, which are using front-end as well as back-end technologies. I uh, made uh, like two, three projects, which are related to e-commerce and movie uh, websites. So I worked on multiple projects, which are using uh, like different, different, uh, uh, you can say tech stack and uh, like the working is also different. So I created multiple projects and those projects helped me to get my first job in this line. Um, like what is the uh, pay scale that someone can ex expect, let's say, uh, starting out, let's say so someone is switching right uh, to tech and uh, want to get into product-based companies. So uh, let's say in front end, what is the pay, pay scale one can expect? Yeah, so like what I noticed is that startups are paying uh, a big amount and like there you have a lot of learning as well because you need to create websites from scratch. But in MNCs, uh, many projects are already built. You just need to monitor them or you just need to add some features. So their pay scale might be less. 
so and a range i would say from uh, 5 to 8 if I you have agree. a great skill so uh, now coming to your interview experience mohit like uh, okay. can you give us a brief about your interview experience at kendril what it was like yeah so in kendril like there was i think uh, three or four rounds so the first round was uh, related to dsc so they asked uh, questions related to array string and uh, some uh, like a uh, hard level questions as well and after that there was two tech rounds so one round was uh, related to my past experience and projects and uh, related to like the tech stack which i know and uh, second was a kind of mix up uh, which was a like managerial round so they asked few questions related to the tech stack and few questions which are related to hr round right, right. so i think coming to the tech stack what what tech stack are you working at with kindle yeah so currently i'm working on python uh, javascript and react js and mysql as a database so if you had to give any uh, let's say uh, tips for someone who is going just for a product based company interview right yeah so uh, if you are going for a web development role for uh, like for front end so your skills in the javascript like your basic should be clear and you uh, should able to explain what these concepts are how uh, the code is executing uh, behind the scene so that is the most important thing and for back end as well your logic should be clear how to create like particular things and uh, like the rest requests and uh, those things so your basic should be clear so, and then if you can get some concepts uh, like agar, uh, jo hard concepts if you have the knowledge of those things so that will be a cherry on the cake right right definitely uh, so how much time do, uh, did it took you like uh, to make the complete switch from marketing to Kendall and uh, is this the normal time that it uh, takes someone from non IT background okay so it took me like 8 to 10 months so I was working in the marketing field and whenever I get some free time, I uh, started learning these things and later on I decided to switch into that line. So in between I quit my marketing job and I like full fledged uh, learning these things. Yeah, so later on when uh, I got an idea that I can do uh, much better in this line and I can learn these things. So I decided to quit that job and then I started learning these things. Uh, properly so this is the normal time that uh, anyone can take from non it background or i think it varies uh, in which you role you are in and it's, what is your target role yeah it depends upon these parameters as well as your learning capacity like how much time you are spending in your learnings so if someone is spending eight to ten hours in in a day so he can i think learn in six to eight months as well because i was doing i was working as well as i was learning so that's why i took some uh, extra time so uh, i think comparing your both jobs uh, like your marketing job and your job at kendrill uh, which one is more exciting to you now and uh, why is that so uh, so like working in the tech role uh, in the kendrill like it is more exciting because here uh, i used to learn new things on day by day like uh, new technologies are coming so you need to upgrade yourself you need to learn new things and you should have a uh, problem solving skills but in non tech in like particularly in marketing you supposed to have good uh, customer handling skills and uh, how to interact with the clients so those things so that is a, a repetitive thing but in uh, tech you need to upgrade yourself and here you are using your logical reasoning and all of that so that's more exciting for me when i was switching from marketing to uh, tech line so my first priority was to get a job in this line so that i should uh, so that i can get some experience in this line so that was my first priority just to get an experience as well as uh, uh, like a normal amount or a good amount of package so that was my first priority while switching and you can change maybe to a better yeah yeah after getting an experience in this line you can showcase that and then you can uh, decide in which company you want to go so I think a lot of companies are there which focus a lot on what kind of experience you had or what uh, institution you went to rather than what skills you have, right? Yeah. So as someone who is looking forward to like making a switch from non-tech to tech, they should like focus on a set of particular set of companies, right? Or they should go for a big company or apply to any role. Uh, so for that, like their first focus should be on uh, tech stack, like in which particular role they want to go. They want to go for a front end or a back end role or some other kind of uh, particular programming language role. So 
once they decide the particular tech stack then they need to learn uh, those things properly and then they can apply for the companies who are looking for those particular roles so that right. can be their strategy right 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 uh, i think that sounds a good strategy right uh, like you can gain experience and keep getting better and then... yeah you are very well familiar with what is going on in the tech industry uh, can you give me your views on how it has evolved in the past few years and what does the future look like to you yeah so past few years tech industry evolved a lot especially after the covid so a lot of things are coming online and uh, like machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence and data analysis data engineering these things are also coming so there is a lot of scope in this it industry so if you have good skills or if you are uh, a good learner or a quick learner then you can easily get into this uh, industry so what are the core skills do you think will be required like uh, i'm talking about like will it be consistency will it be uh, uh, like ability to to learn new things what what is the core skills that are required yeah core skill is like that uh, ability to learn new things that is the first uh, thing like you because new new technologies are coming new frameworks new libraries are coming so you should adapt to new environment quickly you need to learn uh, things quickly so that is the main thing and a quick learner if you are a quick learner then you can easily learn new things so these things are the core basics so you are a like a influencer part time as well right you are you create yeah. content on linkedin i think right so how do you manage your day what does your day look like so as a developer like i started with a scrum where we used to discuss what we did yesterday and after that we had a team discussion like what needs to be done today and uh, what are the bugs or issues uh, we need to resolve then i spent uh, some portion of my time in resolving if there is any bug in the production or in pre production then i used to resolve those things and uh, later on uh, sometimes in the evening we have some discussion calls and sometimes not and i uh, used to interact with our team as well to get the updates of those things and uh, it depends upon our work as well sometimes we have load of work so i used to work late nights and sometimes we have less work so i get a uh, free uh, and i have some time so i utilize that time in uh, doing content creation right so you uh, first focus on your job and then in the free time only yeah uh, so uh, if you were not let's say an engineer only right uh, what would you be apart from yeah, obviously marketing if i was not an engineer then i can go in content creating field because that is also an interesting field which is using my uh, thinking and uh, which like i have interest in uh, designing uh, and creating content so i was in that field so is there anything on your bucket list mohit that uh, like you have been planning for a long time but not able to do and uh, you think you should do yeah so like as a developer i have in my bucket list to uh, learn app development so i want to explore that line as well so like currently i'm uh, doing web development so i want to go in app development as well and as a content creator i uh, am growing on linkedin but i want to grow in on instagram as well so that is in my bucket list that's great i think so mohit i think yeah. uh, so far it's been a very interesting experience for you from marketing to software development and now you are planning to switch into web development as well i'm not planning to switch in app development i just want to explore that line so if i find interest in that so that can be an add on in my tech it was a fantastic podcast with you right and uh, i think to the audience uh, stick around uh, this is not the end and thank you mohit so much for joining today uh, i had a very fun time talking to you i hope uh, your words are very insightful for the audience as well thanks noor for inviting me that's a good discussion yeah thank you thank you for joining